Hi everyone, I'm Julie Gee. I'm the naturalist at Burr Oak State Park. Today we're going to talk about nature journaling. Nature journaling is a way for you to record your experiences and the interesting things that you find in nature. It's really easy to do. All you need is a journal, something to record what you're finding. You can either use a simple notebook or even a book like this. This is the journal I use to record everything that I think is interesting and things that I find at Burr Oak State Park. Or you can make a simple journal of your own that looks like this. It's very simple. All you need is a piece of paper to use as your cover and then some blank pages to go inside. You'll just fold those all together with your cover on the outside, your blank pages inside. You can then take a hole punch and punch holes down the side of your journal so that then you'll weave some yarn through the holes to bind all that together, to hold it all together. Then you can decorate your cover however you would like. I put some nature stamps on mine and just wrote on the front of it. You can use markers or crayons, colored pencils, whatever you'd like. You can now make this your personal journal. So do whatever you want with the cover. Then you've got a simple journal with pages for your writing or your drawing. Now that we have a journal to use, let's head outside and see what we might want to write or draw in our nature journal. Now that we're outside, there's something that you'll want to do before you start writing or recording anything in your journal. And that is to write down the date, the time of day, what the weather is and where you are as you're making your recordings in your journal. It's important to do this because when you look back in the future, let's say a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, having the date, time of day, weather, and location helps you remember what it was um, that you were experiencing. So I'm recording this video for you on July 7th, 2020. It's about 10, 10 a.m. in the morning. It's sunny, humid, and very warm. And I'm actually on my home property this morning. So once you have done that, and I've done that in my journal, then it's time to start recording some of nature's stories. Nature is everywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. You can have your journal with you and record something. That's the wonderful thing about nature journaling. And there's always something interesting to find in nature wherever you are. One of the things that we're going to start with is to really use our listening skills. Um, and I'm going to sit here for a moment and just be quiet. I'm going to even close my eyes because it can help you hear better if you're not looking around. So just for a couple of moments, I'm going to be very quiet, not make any sounds, close my eyes and just listen to what nature is saying. Let's see what we might hear. I don't know if you could hear that, but there's a songbird that's singing very close by. It's one of the tanagers. I think it's a scarlet tanager that is singing. That's the loudest bird that I can hear. 
but there's also a couple of other birds I can hear off in the distance. And I heard an insect buzzing around close to my head as I was sitting here. So that might be something I want to write about, the scarlet tanager. That's a migratory bird, which means it's only here in Ohio in the summertime to nest. Then it's going to fly all the way to Central or South America to spend the winter. So that's a really interesting story to record. Not only should you take the time to listen, but you want to use all of your senses when you're outside doing some nature journaling. So listen, look, uh, touch, smell, just really take the time to use your senses. Now we're going to take a look around to see what we might find that's interesting. And the first thing that I see is this tree, which part of the tree fell over a couple of years ago. But look at the shapes that were left behind on the standing portion of the tree. This would be something very interesting to sketch in your nature journal. And if I walk closer to this tree, something caught my eye right here. Oh, look at this. These are small oak leaves that are emerging. And when little oak leaves come out, they're red like this. So let me get my journal and I'm gonna try to sketch these leaves. Here are two of the leaves that I sketched from the little red oak leaves. I find that it's a lot easier to sketch using a pencil. You could write with either a pen or a pencil, but sketching works better with a pencil. And then you can either leave it in black and white, or you can take colored pencils and fill in the red and green colors that are actually on those leaves. Also remember, you do not have to be an artist to do nature journaling. I'm not an artist and I just do the best that I can when I see something that I want to sketch. So please don't think that you can't do it because you can. Oh look, I found lots of acorn caps here from acorns, which is the fruit of oak trees. And also, Here's a hickory nut that's been eaten by something. Probably you can guess what may have eaten that. Let me try to sketch this hickory nut. Here's my sketch of that hickory nut that's been chewed open by a squirrel. And notice too that I added a little bit of a label to it, labeling it as a hickory nut and then I labeled my oak leaves as new oak leaves. That's really helpful to do too when you're keeping a nature journal. After I drew the hickory nut, I heard another bird start singing called the wood thrush. And I wrote in my journal about the wood thrush. I hear a wood thrush singing its beautiful, clear flute like song. Iole. Iole. I wonder if it has a nest nearby and if there are any babies in that nest. I wonder when it will leave to fly back to Central and South America for the winter. I love the song of the wood thrush. It is one of my favorite bird songs. So I want you to know that you can either write or draw or do both in your nature journal. It's totally up to you. Let's go see what else we can find. One thing you can do to use your sense of touch is to touch and feel tree bark. Touch the bark, see what it feels like, and if you can, use more than one tree because all trees have different types of bark. So what does it feel like? What might you compare it to? 
You can write about that in your journal. Now I've moved from the forest to a garden area and there's lots of activity here in the garden area. There are bumblebees that are getting pollen from the flowers. Lots of bumblebees actually. Here's another one on this flower right here. Look at the bumblebee collecting pollen. They're so important for us to have around. So I've got lots of color and lots of activity with the insects. There are other insects here too, but lots of bees. Insects gathering pollen from the flowers. That would definitely be something to write about and something to try to draw. Here is my sketch of that magenta colored flower that the bees were all over. And it's called bee balm, or another name for it is Monarda. And I know you know why it's called bee balm. That was a male ruby-throated hummingbird at my hummingbird feeder. I didn't want to talk while it was there because I didn't want to scare it away. This is a good example of writing in your journal about how something in nature makes you feel. When I'm standing there with a ruby-throated hummingbird just inches away, it makes me feel so joyful and excited. It's just thrilling to be that close to one of nature's creatures. Well, thanks for joining me today for this nature journaling session. Before we end, I just want to remind you of a few things. Nature is everywhere and there are stories in nature that you can record in your journal. Remember to use all of your senses when you're outside and also your journal is yours. So you do with it what you would like to do when you design it, if you make your own and what you put in your journal is yours. Every journal is unique. Have fun while nature journaling, and thanks again for joining me.